and then we also have a really big retail banking arm, um, which is the typical branches that you see driving by in shopping centers around, um, you know, around the road, and that they deal with checking accounts, loans, lines of credit, mortgage, financial planning, um, and those principles are really with all our different departments. And on top of that, a lot of people might not realize all the other back-end support positions that banks need. So we have everything from marketing to risk to um, actual finance, which I'm a psychology major I'm not as strong with. Um, and we have even a asset management, Wilmington Trust is our um, subsidiary bank, um, Wilmington Trust Asset Management. Um, um, so there are a lot of different roles in a bank that keeps it going, keeps it moving, which is um, really interesting to see. Awesome. And now with your with your um, rotational program, I'm assuming you kind of rotate it through some of these roles? So ours is a little bit unique. Um, there are some banks that do have a rotational program, so you get a taste for different departments and figure out what you're interested in. Um, the way M&T does it is you pick your track going into the bank, so you get to really learn that role, and you're in more of a transitionary role for the first year where you're not kind of thrown in and expected to know everything about the corporate world, how to bank, how to help customers. Mm -hmm. um, they ease you into it and put you with a branch and a mentor that can really help guide you. Um, and the way M&T does it is about one to two weeks a month, you travel and you're with a group of all of the management trainees. And that's when you get to learn about the different roles of the bank. You get to um, network with senior management, um, we have a component where you work on a group project where you, you actually help solve a problem for the bank. So um, that really gives a lot of exposure to the different parts of the bank. Awesome. Cool. So you were saying you were a psychology major and an econ minor. How do you feel that your major and your minor translate it to your career? So um, I get this question a lot. You know, people, I'm sitting in a branch and my customers go, oh, so you studied finance or business, um, and I didn't, and that was, it's completely okay. Um, so with psychology, it taught me so much about working with people, and that's helped me in two different ways, I'd say. So the first would be um, working with my customers, anticipating their needs, helping them problem solve, um, figuring out what might work for them has been a huge help, I think, from my psychology background, as well as psychology helped give me a taste of how to work in a corporate setting. Um, you know, how people think, how they work, how industrial organizations, you know, act. So um, that's really been beneficial for me. Um, econ supplemented that more um, arts and humanities side, if you will, and gave me a little bit more technical background to statistics and economics. Uh, so that was really helped complement me to go into banking. Um, but I will say the bank has been fantastic in teaching me what I need to know about banking. I didn't have to come in and be an expert and no finance, no um, tax returns. They taught me things, how, what I need to look at and how this could help translate into what I do every day. Awesome. That's actually a great segue. So um, let's see, how did you develop the skill set necessary for commercial banking outside of your coursework? So you hit it on at this a little bit, but if you could just expand, that would be great. Yeah, um, well, Definitely so many things at my time at UVA outside of my major and really helped prepare me. So I'd say a lot of the extracurriculars and leadership experience, um, being that with a bank, there's so many management opportunities. Um, you can really help move up, especially with the management program that M&T offered. Having leadership background really helped me prepare for those roles. So um, during my time at UVA, I had a bunch of different leadership positions. Um, through Madison House, I was an ESL tutor and program director. Um, with my sorority, I was on the you know executive council. I uh, participated in Sudco, like a bunch of different things that have really helped just give me that exposure to being a leader and helping um, myself have that confidence to come in and lead a team and um, lead change, facilitate that change and what that process looks like, and really help have that confidence to do so. Um, I also say volunteering gives you a lot of leadership and different exposures. Um, plus, it was actually really big with my company. Um, they really prioritize volunteering. We have a lot of different things that we participate in as a bank, and we also give all of our employees 40 hours of paid time off to just volunteer, separate from vacation and sick leave and all that. So um, being able to talk about my volunteer experience during interviews was actually 
really exciting for my company um, and just gave me that, you know, extra kind of skill to come in and talk about and help lead with my company. Um, I'd say um, if you do happen to be fortunate to have internships, that can always just help because it doesn't always have to translate. I had some various internships, one where I was working on um, with a media company, so it totally didn't relate to banking, but what it did help me was like with time management, sending emails, being punctual, um, you know, learning how to work with others, learning how to solve conflicts. Um, so any type of internship experience is just going to, you know, you don't have to worry about finding the perfect internship, but just having that um, time to work with different organizations and figure out what you like in a company, what you don't, what you like in managers, um, that's always really helpful. And then of course, just, I did a lot of the career events myself when I was um, on the flip side in college. I attended most of the career fairs um, and just kept practicing going up to people, introducing myself, and um, that was helpful as well. Thanks. Yeah, so you mentioned um, a lot of what we would deem like softer skills um, that you learned. So, you know, leadership, um, you mentioned like time management and um, the confidence that you that you need to um, to have in order to approach others. Um, so thank you for that. That's that's really really awesome. It shows that you know we can get that experience outside of coursework, and you can take that and transfer it into your career. Let's see. So what is your favorite thing about the field, and what is your least favorite thing about the field? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so, so favorite, um, I'm going to mention two things if that's okay. Uh, so the first be at the people. Um, I've always been a people person. So getting to work with customers every day, be out in the field, um, working with them, getting to know them, getting to have an involvement with my community around me is just wonderful. Um, so with my role as a branch manager, we work with a lot of small businesses. So um, being able to figure out what their business needs. Um, so recently the banks went through um, with coronavirus, the SBA came out with Paycheck Protection Program, which helps businesses of all a lot of sizes um, get payroll loans so that they could actually keep paying their employees and they brought back on even though their businesses were closed for a few weeks and, um, you know, not have to worry about how to pay my people and this loan you know, if they meet certain requirements, it was 100% forgiven. So we worked around the clock um, for a few weeks to get loans to, let's say, over 30,000 customers. It's a matter of a couple of weeks, which is more than we do normally in years. Um, so being able to help make a difference, you know, talk to my customers, say, hey, you know, you've been approved, here's what you need to do, and being able to see their appreciation like that was just so rewarding. Um, and we see that throughout all types of, you know, different interactions with our customers. It doesn't have to just be a big SBA program, but being able to make a difference and work with the customer is fabulous. Um, and then on the other side of people, I would say I've been fortunate. I've had some really good managers and mentors who've helped me with my career, give me advice, be a sounding board when I don't know maybe which branch do I want to take on next or which role do I want to go into or, you know, how do I handle this request? Um, that's been really helpful. And also on the note of people, my management trainee friends or that I made after college, you know, that first year of working have been some of my best friends today. So that's been a huge benefit of kind of throwing myself into a unique program and um, getting to know like-minded individuals, recent college graduates who went into banking. Um, so that's been a big piece of it as well. So awesome. Um, and then you also asked me my least favorite. Yeah. Um. So it's a good question. I would say something that can be difficult is with a commercial bank, you know, it is a large organization. So M&T has say, over 17,000 people. So sometimes it can be a little bit more difficult to get things moving. Um, it just takes a little bit longer. You have to get a little bit more buy-in uh, to be able to make certain changes in the organization. It doesn't always happen as quickly as things might in a startup environment. Um, but I will say one advantage is with the change of times, um, the impact from COVID-19 and um, technology just being on the rise. Like, for example, we're on Zoom today. Uh, that's helped a lot of businesses, um, my bank included, to respond much more quickly than 
I would say even a few months ago to make things happen, to make the change that we need in order to be successful and keep growing and operating the way our customers do. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, with where we sit today, we've talked a little bit about COVID, um, with where the students are sitting and, and maybe not able to get the traditional internship, um, what would you say is something that students should start doing today uh, in order to gain entry into the field of commercial banking? That's a good question. Um, I would say doing these like you guys are all here today. That's incredible. Um, taking the time on, you know, Monday at 5 o'clock to learn more about an industry is going to be so beneficial. Um, attending virtual career fairs, virtual networking events, um, that's going to be a great way to show that you're still, you know, developing yourself, even in this environment, even if you don't have internship opportunities. Um, and, you know, no matter what industry I say you'd go in, having networking skills is going to be very crucial. So um, the more you can do of that, the better it's going to make you. It's going to make you feel more comfortable. Um, develop your elevator pitch. That's always a big thing that people talk about. Um, I would say that'd be a really awesome way to go about it. And um, there's so many opportunities like to pick up a skill. You know, if there's something that you want to study, something you want to read, like you have this time over summer, don't be afraid to just jump in. Um, learn these. I know like even LinkedIn, they have skills like different web classes that you can take online and just learn a little bit more about um, different processes, different um, if you're interested in coding, there's you know, so many different things out there and I'm sure UVA has resources too. It's just been a few years since I've been there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think those are a couple ideas that you could do. Thank you for mentioning that. I actually just entered into the chat. Um, a Cor Coursera is like very similar to the LinkedIn learning that you discussed. Mm -hmm. And Coursera is actually a resource that all UVA students have access to for free um, now until July 30th. Um, and then you have, you, you can start the class by July 30th. You just have to finish it before September 30th. And it, a lot of what you just mentioned, you mentioned like coding, you, you even mentioned like leadership at one point. Um, and then there's like the financial market side. There's always, there's all these courses for those things on Coursera. So it's a great resource for students who just want to learn more. Yeah, I think that's so awesome. Um, I know something even I've been doing. So Mr. Jefferson is right, learning never stops, um, even when you have a job. So my company offers something similar where you can take different training classes over WebEx. So I've been teaching myself about um, a concept called Lean Six Sigma, you know, the way to make process um, continuous improvement to solve a problem, how to make it more efficient. Um, so that has been something I've been studying in my time during quarantine. So whatever you guys are interested in, I would say just go for it. Yeah, that's awesome. And so I had my last question was very similar. It was um, about one skill, uh, but I feel like you covered that pretty well. I think um, I think one of the things that I'm taking away from this conversation, Brittany, is to have time to network. That's a huge skill to gain. And then also um, take the time to reflect on some of the things that students are already doing in their um, college experience to see where they are gaining valuable skills that can transfer to the workplace. Yeah, and I would say that's definitely something I've noticed about UVA students is while you're at UVA, it encourages you to be well-rounded, to participate in different extracurriculars, um, to be involved in so many different things. And, you know, UVA students really are well-rounded, and that always articulates really well during, you know, when I come back onto camp, onto grounds to interview. Um, so don't be afraid to talk about all those different things that you do outside of your major. That's okay. Companies love hearing about it. I love hearing about students' volunteer activities, leadership activities. Um, and I think there's one more piece of advice I would always have is um, to always just say yes to being introduced to someone and for interviews. I know I've myself and had friends you know when we were in college just kind of intimidated or you know i'm not sure if i want to go into that do i take that time to meet that person uh, but i would say it's always worth you know making that um connection you know it could be it could just at the bare minimum be good practice or it could really pay off later so um that's just another piece i'd want to share 
That's a great piece of advice. I, I agree, Brittany. Um, some of the conversations that I'm like, ah, oh, do I really want to do this? They've actually been the best conversations that I've, I've had. And even if it's not something that I want to do right away, I could also circle back around to that person in the future. I often have circled back around to that person. Um, for example, Brittany, you know, we were in class together and, you know, we said we talked to one another and I'm circling back around to you to have you here to talk to the students. So you just never know when <laughs> people will walk back into your lives. Um, so I want to open it up for questions from the students. Feel free to either jump in and um, you can either unmute yourself and ask a question or either you can post it in the group chat. One thing you wished you had learned or known before entering the field. That's from Caleb. Ooh, that's a great question. Um, sorry, I just said so much. <laughs> no. Um, so a couple of different things. I think being able, if you can, like I mentioned, supplementing some information about banking. I truly did not know much about banking before joining. I really just saw the management development program and I was like, that sounds interesting. Um, so I think maybe having had some more experience doing a little bit more research on what banking is, um, the different areas, departments of it. Um, if there, I had participated in something like this, that would have been really helpful for me. Um, and then being the nature that I'm in just on the retail banking side of the commercial bank, uh, it is, I would say what a lot of people don't realize, you know, I'm interviewing or, you know, people that I came into the bank with, um, is that you really are working with customers every day. Um, I sit in an actual bank branch and it seems kind of foreign concept to a lot of people that are on the younger side because we do all of our banking digitally. Um, you know, maybe we weren't, didn't have that financial education in college or high school. So, um, just knowing that it is working with customers, it is some aspect of sales. Um, we use that term loosely because you're not cold calling, going to a door, you know, you're just working with customers and helping find solutions that meet with them. But that does sometimes surprise people when they come into a role that maybe not is really like analytical or back office setting, but you're actually out in the field that can sometimes mm -hmm. surprise people. Interesting. I like that. So the customer service or um, part of, of commercial banking is really important. You're definitely working with people and not necessarily just with numbers. Exactly. Awesome. Any other questions from students? We have Brittany for another 30 minutes. We don't have to use all 30 of those minutes, but... <laughs> I think I have another question for you. So what do you see as the difference between, um, this kind of stems off of what your previous answer was, but what do you see as the difference between um, commercial banking and some of the other areas of banking and finance that you could go into? Sure. Um, yeah, so I would say banking in general is a really broad term for what a lot of people do. Um, so I think a big one that when people think of banking, I would say what I would think of at UVA was investment banking. And that is a much more grueling environment from the friends that I have in that department, you know, a lot longer hours, you're working with investments, either doing research on stocks, trades, making those trades. Um, and it can really be around the clock, depending on which market you're working in. If you're working in international markets, you might be working late at night, um, but it really is a hectic environment. Um, commercial banking is another, you know, the actual commercial department where you're working with commercial clients. Um, is going to be working with those large businesses. You have really complicated um, financials. You might have to figure out how you can lend to them, how you can help them. Um, they have a lot of employees themselves. So, you know, how can you really find what works for them and um, make their lives easier as a business? And similarly for um, what we call business banking at M&T, which is those micro, medium-sized businesses, um, you know, might just be that one owner is, doing the job of a million people. So, you know, they're managing, they're the CFO, they're the CEO, you know, that's all kind of in one. You're really trying to be that partner for them and help make those decisions of what to do next to take a line of credit so they can get the inventory they need so they can, um, 
you know, grow their business or take on another individual to help them win a government contract. Um, there's a lot of different kind of uh, compartments to that. And um, retail banking, I talked a little bit about is branch, a lot more working with those micro-sized businesses or retail customers. Um, and then wealth management is another big mm -hmm. uh, arm you guys hear about. And that's usually working with people that have assets of more than three to $5 million. So if you think of the wealthy people of the world, I'm um, helping them manage that wealth. And whether it's to grow or to keep it safe so they can leave a legacy to their family, um, you that's what you all do. And so what I like about my job is I get to work with all different departments. Um, you know, I do have some larger business customers that I'm helping. So I work with the commercial bankers. Um, with my management program, I went and got my life and health insurance license and my investment license so I can help retail customers um, make those choices, have those conversations to figure out how can, they can protect what's important to them or build their wealth. So you really get to touch on a lot of different compartments when you're in banking. Um, did that answer the question? Yeah, yeah. No, I think that that definitely answers the question of um, kind of what's the difference. To me, it seems that um, what you're able to do is, is really eclectic and um, which probably, it sounds to me like you're a lifelong learner as most UVA um, undergrads and grads are. So it, that probably helps you because you get to continue to learn and grow and do different things. Um, it's probably, this is probably, oh, we have Angela here. Angela is asking, is commercial banking something you see yourself doing for a long time down the road? Or how does your current role fit into your overall career goals? Great question, Angela. Yeah, that's an awesome question. <laughs> so I'll be perfectly honest, I never saw myself doing commercial banking. Um, but now I've been doing it for five years and I always know that I'm an m and lifer. Like I don't see myself going anywhere um, because that is something I really enjoy because there's so many different opportunities. Um, and one thing I've been blessed with like my company is that they're always focused on development. So even though I went through that one year training program, it wasn't like, okay, like you're in your next role, we're done. It was like, okay, what can we do to help you grow or get you to the next mm -hmm. spot? So um, right now I'm a branch manager, but I've had lots of conversations and lots of training and building myself to be the next step, which would be like a regional manager where I oversee about 15 branches um, and those employees and help make strategic decisions and, um, what we call coach the coaches, so you know, lead those managers. Um, that is, that's like one of the next steps for me. Um, what's been great about working with m is I've seen some different um, departments, as I mentioned. So I've been able to build my network in different departments. I've had some project roles as well, where um, with the University of Maryland, that was a project for the bank where we spent months before we opened it, planning the marketing, planning, um, like the layout of the branch, it's a whole new layout that doesn't look like a typical retail branch. Mm -hmm. um, planning operations, kind of everything with it, it was a, more of a project role. So um, that's another area that I can totally see myself doing, and it's maybe tomorrow, maybe in a couple of years, depending on the right opportunity. So I don't kind of, I've never felt stuck, you know, in my role because the bank does have so many different departments from being a project manager to being in marketing or regional um, that. I do see myself kind of staying in the commercial banking world, at least for the foreseeable future. And if something does come up, if, like, so my bank is only in Mid-Atlantic. So the skill set that banking teaches you is, I think, so applicable to other careers. You know, you're working with numbers, you know, managing people's finances. You are working with customers. You're leading others. Um, those skill sets really are applicable to other types of career opportunities. Awesome. You're still, even after college, you're gaining all those transferable skills that can kind of go with you wherever, yeah. wherever you decide to go. Cool. Absolutely. All right, students, any other questions for Brittany? Brittany, I'd like to know what a typical day looks like for you. It sounds to me like that may be hard to pinpoint, um, but I'd like to see if you could tell me what a typical day would look like. Yeah, um, absolutely. So a typical, I'm going to talk about typical branch manager day because with the University of Maryland is a little bit abnormal, mm -hmm. it's a special kind of branch for m and but there are really main three components to my job. So the first would be 
um, the sales piece, working with business clients and help getting to know them, their priorities, and, you know, figure out what solutions could help them align with their company's priorities. Uh, the next would be coaching. I spend a lot of time, I have several direct reports. So having one-on-ones with them, coaching, helping them get to where they want to be or help improve their performance. Um, so that's a big piece of my job as well. And that's also mm-hmm. could be managing HR issues, hiring, firing, um, all the types of HR decisions would roll up to me. Um, and then the last big bucket would be managing risk. So, um, being that there's a bank, there's a lot of compliance and regulations we deal with, um, which is, you know, one of the reasons why I mentioned things always don't happen as quickly is banks are held to a lot of regulation, um, that you are supposed to know the bank is busy, but you know, like that's why sometimes things don't always happen as the way you envision it happening. Um, so managing compliance and risk and also fraud and, um, making sure that the bank is safe, my, and most importantly, my employees are safe. So um, a typical day would be a variation of that, you know, maybe a couple client meetings, um, you may be sitting down with one of my employees and teaching them something, maybe, you know, they might come over and bring me a bad check, you know, do I feel comfortable with it? Do we send them on their way? You know, what the next steps would be. So it's really is hard to make an actual day because you never know what's going to walk in your door. So we always joke, you know, you can plan perfectly, but you also have to, <laughs> And to have it just be kind of chaotic and have that free time. So, you, you know, if something gets thrown off in your schedule, you can manage it. Awesome. Yeah, that's great, Brittany. That, um, to me, that's helpful to visualize kind of what you do on a daily basis. So we have another question from Caleb. He says, what would you recommend for students financing their college education from an industry perspective? I assume that so, means like taking out the loans from an industry perspective. Okay, so like student loans. Maybe Caleb, do you want to give us a little bit more insight into what you're what you're mentioning here? I can try to answer. Yeah, that <laughs> sounds great. <laughs> yeah. So I I will be honest, I'm not as like um knowledgeable of student loan financing. Um, There's a lot of things that banks do offer, but typically they are through Sally May. So for example, M&T Bank, we offer student loans, but it is with Sally May. So that's why I'm not as familiar. Um, There are a bunch of different financing options too. Um, I always talk with with my customers that they have students or their children are, you know, going to go into college in a couple of years. We talk about ways to help them start saving, you know, 529 plans. Um, you know, if there's equity in their home, we have home equity lines of credit, which is tends to be one of the lower um, rates compared to different types of other, like just a unsecured or cash secured loan. Um, so find different ways that we can almost like open up some money for them in the equity that they have. Um, sometimes people like start investments, um, you know, or saving plans for their kids. It's always good mm-hmm. to start saving as early as possible. Um, and just a side note to everyone, as soon as you get a job, start saving, put that money away. Um, that is a big banking advice. So, um, you know, it's always good to just have an emergency pot of funds. Um, but in terms of uh, financing yourself through college, there's a bunch of different programs. I know the government has those Sally Mae loans. Um, there are some private loans, which are typically recommended after all like public resources are exhausted because sometimes they don't have the same protections as um, like, like government type loans um, and you want to make sure that you know what you're getting into in terms of interest rates and you know really making sure you're reading those disclosures so you know what the expected of you you know after you're in, after you're done with college you know when you have to start paying back that loan that's always really important. Awesome thank you Brittany. Hope that sorry sorry Kim. <laughs> Does anybody else have questions for Brittany while we have her? Angela has another question. How do you develop your leadership style as branch manager? What kind of relationship do you have with your employees? And how did you learn how to motivate your employees? That's a great question. Wow, I love that question. Um, so one thing that I have, 
I'm probably going to have a long answer for this, so my apologies. Um, so I've done a lot to develop my leadership style. Um, one thing I think was just first is knowing what my style is, like my how I communicate. So one great, <laughs> great guy, like long answers. So um, one great thing like this is done is um, we, I've done it, what we call a DISC assessment, um, which helps kind of figure out whether you're more of a director or an influencer, um, conscientious or steadiness, I'm going to say it's the S. Um, and that really helps you learn about yourself. So you know how you reflect onto others. And if you can then know your employees and what style they might be, you have to have enough awareness to maybe say, hey, do I want to come off this way? Or can I tailor myself so they can understand my messaging better? Um, you know, for example, as you guys probably could tell, I'm very animated, very bubbly. I talk pretty quickly. So sometimes I remember if someone's not that way, I need to slow myself down, make sure I'm actively listening, you know, not jumping in when I get really excited because that might turn off that individual. Um, same thing with the Strength Finders. I don't know if you guys have familiar with that book. There's like 34 strengths in there. Um, totally great. Would recommend that as well. Um, if you want to get that book and figure out what are your top five strengths and that really can help you have an understanding of how you might come up to people and how you can leverage your strengths to be more successful. Um, so I think all the types of as a psychology majors, all the types of personality related things are really interesting. Um, and of course, I would say learning from other leaders has helped me um, be a better manager. So one piece of advice I got um, when I was going through my management development program, I was like, I love my manager. Or I don't want to leave. And someone said, well, you want to leave because you want to see other styles. And they suggested taking like, a notebook and writing down the things I liked that they did and the things that I didn't like for different managers. So I would know this works for me. And I want to duplicate this and, um, you know, make myself stronger this way. And, you know, when my manager said, did X, Y, Z, like, I didn't really like it. Why didn't I? And would other people feel the same? And maybe I should be careful to avoid that as a manager. So that really helped me to sort of really define small behaviors. So I knew what I wanted to like emulate when I had my own branch. Um, so that really helped too. And then of course, with like the management program, we got to lose all senior leaders. And um, one thing too, that's really important at companies is like their corporate culture. You'll hear that term a lot. So with m and it's very collaborative and um, you know, they love, their leaders to be that way and um, to help others and to mentor and things like that. So that really works well with how, who I am. Um, and then your next question of what kind of relationship I have with my employees. Um, I'd say it's a good one. I hope and <laughs> they would say the same. Um, definitely professional. Um, that's one thing I do. You know, I'm not changing who I am when I go to work and come home, but I am making sure, you know, my, oversharing, giving too much of my personal life, you know, I want them to feel comfortable with me, but there is, you know, professional boundaries. And sometimes it is difficult. I've um, been a manager to UVA graduates who are only a couple years younger than me. So it's so awesome. I'm like, yeah, let's be friends. But I'm like, wait, we got to draw the line. And we, um, you know, we have to, I have to make sure that I'm there as like their mentor, their coach, there to listen, um, first and foremost. Um, but I do say, you know, I'm always very helpful trying to be very helpful with my employees you know how can I help them understand educate them I always explain the whys behind what I'm asking for them so they don't feel like I'm just telling them what to do for no reason um and I very much have an open door policy you know when they have concerns I'm always here to listen and I make sure that they know that and I'm here to learn and do better you know if there's something that I'm doing that isn't okay like let me know I'm here to improve you know I'm still learning I've, you know, even though I've been in the role or five years, you know, with the bank, there's still always so much to improve on and get better so you can be a better manager. Um, and the last question, how did I learn to motivate my employees? A fabulous question. Um, I ask. I, I want to know if I have a new employee or I come to a new branch and have new, like, they're new to working with me, I like to know what motivates you. Um, you know, some people, like, how do you, I might say, how do you like to be recognized? Do you like public recognition, private recognition? Some people just want like a little email to them. Some people love it when I tell my boss and my boss's boss and say, hey, they did a great job. Like they love that. But that might intimidate another employee. So learning 
I think it's just the easiest way to ask them, you know, what incentivizes you to do a better job or to recognize you for your hard work. Um, and I would say, especially when you have times of like crisis, like in um, the last three months, <laughs> a couple mm-hmm. of different crises, is making sure you're there to like listen, um, that they know that you understand what they're going through. Um, even just one day brain breakfast, those little things can really go a long way to show you're here, you care, you can empathize, um, you know, but we'll all come together as a team to get through everything and come out even stronger. Awesome. Thank you, Brittany. That was such a thorough answer. And Angela, thanks for that question. Hey, any yeah, other fantastic questions? Question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> any other questions for Brittany? All right, Brittany. Oh, we have Caleb. Yep. When developing the project to start a new branch at UMD, what informational resources did you use to assess the business environment? And how did you apply them to your decision? That's a great question as well. These are it's all great, great questions. Question. Yeah. So um, a lot went into the decision to open up to the University of Maryland. Um, a couple for MNT was that we wanted to have a stronger presence in the greater Washington area. Um, we, m and is really strong in Baltimore. We are, have our name on the Raven Stadium. We have a really big presence in our headquarters in Buffalo. Um, so being attached to such a big organization like the University of Maryland, which is in the greater Washington suburbs, was a huge opportunity for us. Um, on top of that, we were really thrilled to get in the doors with the younger generation, um, Gen Z students, and be able to connect with them right when they're ready to maybe start a bank account or really get more involved with finances and be that resource for them and grow with them um, and help them, you know, when they graduate and they get that job and how to budget once they're in that next phase of, phase of their life. And in years from then, when they're ready to buy a house, we wanted to start early and be able to really be that resource. So that, those were a couple of the main reasons why we were so thrilled with this um, investment opportunity. And then a lot of what I did is figuring out what, would make students interested in thinking with M&T. So um, we actually went to their move on weekend, which is, you know, the big event in August when they have a few days of underclassmen and upperclassmen moving in. So we set up and we actually designed a survey to figure out what are you interested in? So like, what would you like the branch hours to be? You know, do you want the staff comprised of students or not students? Do you want the space to, like, how do you want the space to be set up? If we did financial education, what courses would you be interested in? So we really um, put like the, so we were, came in open-minded. We wanted to hear what makes sense for the University of Maryland. We might not know what, we might know what works for other areas of banking, different, our different customers, but this is a new area for M&T Bank. We want to be so open-minded and really figure out how this be kind of a test and learn for us. You know, does this work? Can we go to other colleges? Maybe <laughs> UVA is next. Um, so that was a really awesome opportunity where we had a few thousand or students and parents that we talked to to figure out what would you like um, to help really begin our design of the branch and our um, resources. You know, our, we built up our financial education program and tailored that for students. So um, those are just some of the information we use to help make our um, make the bank uh, design it around the University of Maryland. Thanks, Brittany. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Well, Brittany, thank you so much for being here. It's great to reconnect with you. Um, just personally, it's great to re- reconnect with you because I haven't seen you in, in probably a year or two, I guess, since one of the recruiting events at UVA. Um, but professionally, it's also really great to have you here to help inform our students on commercial banking. Um, So we're just so appreciative of you and we uh, are grateful for you to be here. If we can do anything um, for you in the future, please let us know. We'd be happy, happy to do that. Otherwise, thank you so much, me, Megan. This is great. Anyone has questions, line. Megan has my information and I'm always here to help answer any questions and um, be a resource. So thank you guys. Thanks for coming.
And m and Bank will probably be on grounds in the fall, right? To Well, I say on grounds, but virtual career fairs in the fall to, <laughs> to recruit, we, we hope at least. Um, all right. Well, thank you all for being here. Thanks, students. Um, thanks, Brittany. We are going to go ahead and conclude tonight's webinar. Thank you. Thanks.